Right now you're into Urban Mix. Make sure you stay in tune with the best. Yeah. All right, so Fluxy is joining us right now. Hey, Fluxy. Hi. I'm good. I'm All fine. Right. Okay. If you are here, share with friends. Floating is live right now. We're going right now. Hello, Floating. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. All right. It's it's nice to have you. I know. What is the time actually over there right now? Um, twelve a.m. Wow. Sorry for keeping you up, and I mean, after we posted this, we realized that a lot of people wanted to actually know what is going on and want to know more about you and also know your story. So we are we are very glad that you, you actually stayed that late to be with us today. And we thank everybody that is here watching us today. This is a beautiful story that we want to share with the whole world because... I mean, this beautiful lady you're looking at right now has been through a lot by, by her things. And, and I think I would say her perseverance, she succeeded. And she's here today to share with us. So without much ado, I'll just go ahead and say, introduce yourself to our, our viewers that are watching us today. So I, I leave it to you, Foxy. Just go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. Um... I'm Joy Martins by name, also known. Um, I mean, also known as Florence, and um, I live in Spain with my daughter. Um. Uh, what else should I say? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's, I mean, it's short. As, as we're going to go ahead and do more. Of you that, have to do questions, yeah. then I'll do the answering, please. Okay, so I want to know this. Do you actually follow Michael Blanson on his page? Yeah, I do. The TV Tuesday King. Do you follow him? Yeah, I followed him. I mean, a lot of people are going to say, I mean, the first time, because of this show, I followed you to get stars, you know, whatever is going on. But a lot of people are going to say, I mean, with, with you having a kid with you, mm -hmm. was it so surprising to see that you follow him? And I like a lot of people are going to say, like, a lot of guys follow him because... Most people want to come out here and see titties and, and people shaking us and stuff like that. So, like, how did you decide to join, join him? Or, I mean, what was the, what was the motivation? Mm, well, um, I was just, I've been following him for a while now. And um, I've never, I've never been on his life before. So, that night, I mean, that day, I was actually talking to a friend some group of friends on a on a video group chat a group call so okay. while talking to them i i shared my story with them and they were like wow you need to you need to share this story to other people because they were just like wow you are you, you are such a strong woman people need to know about this and all that so and i said okay no problem i will do that one day so I was just on my bed. I, I wasn't feeling sleepy at all. So I saw um, Michael, uh, Michael Blackson on live. So I said, let me just go. I clicked on it and I requested for him to call me. Then next two minutes, he just did. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> and I, I, I was just like, it wasn't up to five minutes I joined the live video and he called me. I was like, what am I going to do? Okay, now I think it's, my, it's, it's time to share my story. I don't care what other people are doing there. I don't, I, I don't, as in I don't want to do, you know, I just want to share my story and, and I see how it goes. And that's how. What were you surprised actually when, when she picked you and when actually she asked you, what are you wearing? Because you know where, where he was driving to. Were you surprised? Yeah, yeah. When he yeah, when he asked me what I was wearing, I was actually, I was like, hmm, I'm wearing PJs, <laughs> but uh, I'm not here. I'm here to share my story because I just don't want to like, 
know what they were actually doing there. I just want to share my story, and that was all. Because were you surprised, like, he didn't catch you or Because, like, he has his rules. If you come there and you can't show titties, you can't show goodies, it means you're not supposed to be there. So were you surprised when he actually took the time to listen to you? Mm, yeah, I was surprised because a lot of comments was coming in. They were just coming in, like, nest nest and i was nervous at that, at that point that he was going to cut me off but when he said okay uh, you have a story to tell us okay let's hear it and when he just said let's hear it i just okay he wants to hear hear me say my you know yeah i think i think god has his own way of bringing people out because looking at that platform and your kind of information you're bringing all the viewers know we're not happy. They were not ready from the beginning. I was there. Yeah. I was just saying, people were saying, that's that. Anybody that comes up and just do things that they don't like, they'll be like, that's that, that, then they take you off. But yeah. I was also surprised that at the point they said, okay, just share your story and let us hear it. Let's get straight to the story. What motivated you as a lady of your age, at that age of 15 years? decided to just leave Nigeria to go to Europe? Mm, actually, it's a long story, though. But I I'm just going to... Started, yes. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm, I'm just going to summarize it a little bit. Um, I know since in Africa, it's really, really strong. And um, I came from a family whereby uh, we are poor, not too rich, you know? So... Um, I just woke up one day and said, I need to do something for my family and as in I need to do something. Then I was in school. I just finished my work and um, I was like, okay, uh, no money to for, for, for that the education, you know. So I was like, mm, okay, I have a suggestion. Let me just go to, because I was hearing my friends say, talking about Europe, Europe. And there, were, there was a lady in Italy that wanted to, like, pay for my trip, that wants to pay for my trip. So I, I accepted, like, okay, I, I was going to go. So I told my parents about it, and they were like, where did you get that from? They said, hey, my friends still want to go. I was trying to convince them, and they were like, no, you can't, you can't do that. You are too young for that. And I told them that... I don't know. I don't know if I'm too young for that, but all I know is that I want to do it. And my parents, they know that when I said I want to do something, I must do that thing. If they don't allow me to do it, I'll, I'll pass their back and do what I want to do. Except, you know, like I was this child that is very stubborn, so anxious, so determined to get whatever I want to get. So, and I think. The, the lifestyle in Nigeria actually motivated me to leave Nigeria. Well, I was, to... was, was, your, was your mother afraid? I mean, yes, they would be afraid and say, no, don't go. And because yeah. in your story earlier, you said she actually later gave you a, a rapper. special rappers. And were they <laughs> so much afraid, even though you decided to go? How, how, was, well, how was their reaction in the first place? Oh, they, they were really, really afraid. Because uh, then I didn't know anything. Like I said, I was 15 years old. I didn't know uh, how hard it will, it was going to be. Even then, they didn't know. I don't think they knew that that the journey is going to be very very hard. And um, they were really scared. But they had they had no options than to you know let me go. And even the day I left, they were not aware. I just went out with friends, and I didn't come back home again. Then they knew that, oh, she, she, she already made up her mind to go. So um, before then, my mom already gave me the wrapper. Like, anytime I, she, she, she already gave it to me. Like, um, take this wrapper. Uh, whenever you miss home or whenever you feel ill, just use it and cover yourself and you'll be fine. And I said, okay, so that wrapper was always inside my school bag. Now I was still you know, going to school with school bag and all that. So I was carrying it and that was it. I left. And right. they didn't... Be, 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 before, I mean, your parents are going to say, no, don't go because you're more determined and you wanted to move ahead. 
Mm. You hear some stories that people cry and they die. I mean, a lot of stories always coming out from Africa. Yeah. And you being a lady, did you hear some of the stories and it didn't scare you for you to still go ahead? The thing is that I didn't even know. I didn't know how I've never heard of anybody traveling out before. I was actually thinking I was going to use flights because uh because they did that they did my passport the woman in Italy that was carrying um paying for my trip she did she did she did my passport and other things I was like I I was thinking is is flight until we, we stayed in a bus for like more than 12 hours and I was not telling myself this is not flight anymore Ha, this is not flight anymore. And everybody that we're going together, all of them, they know because they were much more older than me. The 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 uh, age range there. I mean, the youngest in my in my set, she was twenty six years old, and I was fifteen. You see, like the yeah, the youngest, so the youngest was twenty six, and I was fifteen. So they 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 all know. I I was just the one that didn't know about. How the trip was going to be, if it was flight or if it was um, flight, land. Flight road. Yeah, so I found out everything I needed to know on the journey. I mean, in it. So, whilst on the road and you realize this actually is going to be a road trip, do you mm -hmm. decide at the point that you want to go back? Na never. I didn't. No. So from Nigeria, which country did you go to first before you continue? Which country I got to first? Yes, I mean from Nigeria because you, it's a road trip. So from the bus, the first state or the first country you get to before you follow up to the next okay. state. Okay. Um. Uh. We took uh, a big bus and it took us straight to Kony. They call that place. We passed through a lot of um, small, small villages, small, small countries. I can't really know the, the ones exactly because some of them, we don't even spend a night there. But yes, some, we spend like three nights, two nights, depending on how uh, organized, you know, we were then. So that time, I knew we stopped at uh, Sokoto to change the, change the bus. Then later, uh, Kony. Then one border that I didn't really, I can't really remember the name, that the police people had to stop us, search us, and ask us to, like, where are we heading to, how old I was. Then I didn't say I was 15 years anymore. I said I was 22. So, so that they can... <laughs> yeah, It was, everybody there started increasing their age. So me too. I said, okay, now me too, I will increase my age too. <laughs> All right. So you were being smart. So... At the point, your last destination that you realize, okay, this time around, we have to stay here till we know what is the way forward. Where was that country from Nigeria when you passed through all these places? At the mm -hmm. place that they said, okay, now this is where you're going to stay for the next year, the next minute, the next hour, the next month. And where, where will you be? Mm, actually, you don't, you can't tell where you are going to stay or where you are going to be in one, um, I mean, what you said, you don't know, you don't just know, you just find yourself staying there for, for long and later you pick up again and start moving. Which, which country do you kept long? I mean, I mean, you okay, spent most of your time. Okay, um, I stayed in Libya. Libya for I think a year plus a year and eight months. Then it took me like three months from Libya to Morocco. It took me three months or four months to get to Morocco, and oh, I stayed. Yeah. In, yeah, and in so Morocco. Staying stay, stay in Libya was it at a point that you were still with the agent, or staying in Libya was like okay, this is the final destination. Stay here, work your way out, and go. Um. Yeah. Mm, in Libya, yes, the, the person that was paying my trip abandoned me okay. because now in Libya the road uh, was blocked, like closed. No more crossing. No more crossing the sea. Uh, there were already police everywhere. And uh, if you go, is it that you don't make it, 
or the police will arrest you and take you to jail. Then from there, they will deport you back to Nigeria. So the woman in Italy now knows that I can't cross over anymore. So she changed her line and I didn't hear of her anymore. I called my parents to tell them, oh, look at the problem now, look at the situation of things, that the woman stopped speaking my calls and the woman like don't want to help anymore. Because normally when you take a girl to that far and it's not going to work anymore, you have to pay another money so that that girl can return back to the family. But this woman didn't even, she just abandoned me there. So there, that was when I said, okay, I am all alone. No more uh, apoyo in Spanish, like no more support you get. So I, I have to stand on my own that time. And I was still 15 then too. So um, that was how I started, you know, making plans on how to move forward. Because I and my parents at that point, my parents asked me to come back home. And that was already, I think, um, um, six months or eight then. And they asked me to come back home. And I said, no, um, I wasn't going to come back. My mom started crying. Please, though, you have to come home. Okay, you know what? When you come, we'll look for money and we'll re-enroll you again in a, in a school so you can do your your Wayek and Eko again. And I said, okay, no problem, mommy. I will come back. I just told her that so that her mind would be at rest that I was going to come back because I, I told my parent, my, my father that I was going to Morocco and my dad knows how dangerous Morocco was. Uh, they used to kill people, they used to beat people, they used to, as in anything can happen in Morocco that is so, so, so bad was, there. Was Spain your target when you were leaving Nigeria? No. Where was your target when you were leaving? Italy. You knew you were going to Europe, but which country was your target? Italy. Okay. Yeah. Be because your sponsor was in Italy, so the whole process was taking you from Nigeria to Italy. Italy, yes. Sure. So that, that is, everything changed when she decided at this point that she cannot help anymore. Then she was not going to pay another money for them to send you back. So then she then abandoned you. Yeah, she did. And so within that time that you were in Libya, what kind mm. of job do you do to mm. keep up yourself, to be able to save, to plan for the next trip? Okay. The woman that used to like um, strike, they call it strike people, like strike people to Italy. That as the woman you pay to, uh, that will now take you to a boat that you leave. You know, I was there with her and she has an African shop in Libya there. So while I was there, I started helping her with the African stuff things and I also make hairs. So I was there with her and um, she was planning on taking me back to Nigeria because now I had no other means than to like, go back to Nigeria. And then I've already accepted that I was going to go to Nigeria. But I was also praying for a miracle to happen because I I, as in, I don't want to go back home. You know, I don't want to go back home. It's going to be more harder than it was when I left. So I was now with the woman making hair. I make her hair. I used to make her hair every weekend. So when she saw that I knew that I know how to make hair very well. She now opened a small petty salon for me where, where uh, other girls made their hair and I was making money there to saving for myself, uh, saving for my tickets to back to Nigeria. So in the process, this lady, I didn't know that this lady was into drugs. So uh, one night, the police, the uh, Libya police came and bust the house. They entered and they destroyed everything, took her, took everything. I, I was left there because I... I wasn't part of the stuff and I didn't even know what was happening then. So it just came, took her away. So I I left the house and went to a friend's house close by. From there, I didn't see the woman anymore. Even the money I saved to go back to Nigeria all was taken by the police. Then I moved from um, Libya, I mean, um, 
Zuara, where in Libya, the state I was in Libya was Zuara. So I, I moved from Zuara to Tripoli, the capital city, to get a job as a house help to an Arab a woman, a Libyan person. So I was working with them for, let, um, let's, let me say, like four months. There I saved money. to I, I now looked for a connection that would take me to Morocco because I was hearing that uh, people do cross in Morocco and Morocco is very close to Spain. You get so and I was like, okay, let me save money to get to that place. And that was it. And I so saved the whole money. idea of going back to Nigeria smashed after the woman was, was arrested, all your money and everything. So now, yeah. even thinking of going back to Nigeria, you have to change plans to move forward to Morocco so that you can cross over. Yes. At what point did you meet your boyfriend, I would say, that you got pregnant? And what, what actually happened to that extent? Of getting pregnant okay and now um after saving money to go to morocco i paid somebody a guy to bring to take me to morocco so this guy when we got to morocco everything changed now women don't have say in morocco if you if you if you just say anything the next thing is is that they beat you or three boys will just you know, mess you up. So, uh, when we got to Morocco, I was there with them. Me paying, I paid, but now it's no longer, I, I don't have a say because I'm a lady. Now, the man is now looking for somebody that will buy me, you know, like they do trade, um, woman trafficking stuff there. So, they, they will not be looking for another woman. They were not looking for another woman to settle me, like buy me off them, you get. So I will go there and pay the women their money. That place, um, I was there for nine months. Praying, praying, fasting, and other things were going on. So other things were going on day, 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 by, day by day. Then my baby father came and he told me, oh, um, where are you from? What are you doing here? And I, I, I explained to him and he said, okay, that he was going to pay for my trip if only I give him a child. You understand? So and at that point, I didn't have no money, no support from home and no support from any other place. So I had to like accept the offer. And I also like told, told myself that, okay, if I should look for a, a madame in Spain to bring me to um, to take bring me to Spain, I will have to do prostitution to pay her the money. So is I, I not choose from doing it, being doing a prostitution doing prostitute to pay the money. I prefer having a child because it's, the child is going to be mine forever and it's going to you know like that. So I, I decided to choose that. I, I choose him, like being getting pregnant and giving him a child while he pays for everything. But everything changed after I got pregnant. So it was all. How? I don't I mean, Yeah, take it easy. I know. I know. That is the hardest part. Yeah. Because, like, all your journey, anytime you try to make a progress, something comes up. And that is that is that is the point that you see, like as a lady, a lot of people try to take advantage. But I, I think you said that this guy was from Nigeria. Was it true he was from? Yeah, Nigeria? yeah, he's from Nigeria. So did you actually love him, or you believed in him in mm -hmm. the first place for you to just open up to him? Uh, I didn't love him. I didn't love him. I just had no choice. Because at that point, it's either somebody taking you to Spain and you're going to do prostitution to be able to pay back. So you believe him as a Nigerian brother saying that, okay, at the end of the day, I'm just going to be with you. Yeah. You have a child for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so what what changed? I, I don't want to spoil your story. What changed from after after you got pregnant? Okay. Um. When I got pregnant, uh. I think 
I met him during a uh, festival period, December. So January, he paid everything. He paid he paid for for the guy bringing me from Libya to uh, Morocco. And you know those those money was already paid by me. But based on I don't I can't say if I talk they are going to do something else. You know, so, so I don't. Yeah, the guy now paid for the, that money, and um, he took me to his house. We started staying. The first month, I got pregnant, and he was so mad at me that why would I get pregnant? That he do, he didn't need the baby now. Like he don't want the baby. That that is, that is what he said. Get pregnant. Yeah, baby. that was what he said. But he's as I don't really. He wanted to like maybe have fun before and me i want to get pregnant so he will just take me to spain i was just in that uh, agreement we had you understand so that was me when getting i don't i didn't even know that uh i don't even i we just it just happened that i got pregnant and i said i was going to keep it because he actually wanted us to take it out like i bought it but i said no i want to keep it in my mind because uh, earlier the better <laughs> get yeah. pregnant he's going to like okay now you can now go so that was it and um, the first two months was so bad uh, I think I'm, I, 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 I will just cry if I start seeing those parts I started looking for money like begging in Morocco there is no work for immigrants no work not at, not the way it is now. Then when I was in Morocco, you beg for money, like salam alaikum. You go to the mosque, you sit down, you wait for them to close, then you start begging them for money. And that is how I, I saved. Hold on. Uh, yeah, you can it. That is how I saved uh, money. So uh, the plans changed because I got pregnant earlier. So I had to work my way out. But still, I was still living with him because I had nowhere to go, no place to go. So I had to stay there. And that's how I spent um, one, uh, two years plus in Morocco. And you were still staying with him. He was not taking care of you. And you were still pregnant for him. Yeah. At that point, did you call your parents to let him know? Huh? Did you call your parents to let them know that I'm still in Africa and I'm pregnant. Did you call them to let them know what was going on? Uh, before then, Seth, before then, I told them my plans. I called them and I told them, ah, um, daddy, situation has changed though. This is what is going on now. Like, I have to accept this. Um, as I have to do this so I can get to where I'm going. And when they heard that I was in Morocco, my father fainted oh. as in he painted my father is my as in my father is like my mom like supposed to be my mom why my mom was would that be my dad because my my mom is she's very strong but my dad no when anything about his kids he's always like oh he would just faint collapse and you know so when he heard that i was in morocco he collapsed and my mom started uh, shouting at me, do you want to kill your father? I said, come back home, come back home, you know. I was like, mommy, I'm fine. This place is good. No problem. It's not how they were. They say it, they, they, as in they tell us back home. It's not like that. It's, I was just trying to calm her down so she will not be. But you were still going through a lot of problems. Yeah, I couldn't tell them anything. Even till today, I didn't, I haven't even Set, sat them down to explain everything that happened. But sometimes I'll just keep out uh, that it wasn't this day no, or thank God today I'm alive, you know. So the, the, the pregnancy stuff, they knew about it. When when the pregnancy was uh, a month, no, two months old, I had to call my mom. Uh, mom, I'm pregnant to see why I did it. And I hope it works for me. They should pray for me. And they were like, okay, my daughter. And that's... And while she was still staying with this guy that at the, at the end of the day, he told you he was going to help you, take you to Europe, Spain, I mean specifically, and things changed because you got pregnant. 
what were some of the things that he was taking you through and in terms of you sharing with us because this is a, actually sharing your story to let a lot of ladies not to scare anybody because there are a lot of things that people go through to get to your yeah, destination europe america and everything just you being that strong to go through this that's what we wanted to share with friends what what are some of the things that i mean people will say being coming from the same country people will think that you treat you same lovely take care of you what are some of the things that this guy took you through hmm. <laughs> it's just uh, uh he was will i say as i don't just know how to like i don't know how to put it but I, i'm going to try in this way he was not scary he was he's just um self centered like on his own he only know about himself you get and that time he used to hit me even at the point i almost lost my baby because that at that first two that first four months he was always hitting me even kicking me in my stomach to you know because he knows that hitting me in my stomach will make the baby go okay but then i had issues i go to, i i was rushed to the hospital to check and they were complaining about the placenta and all that stuff i was bleeding but thank god the baby was still strong inside so um, being with your country person does not mean you are safe it's just god you get because all the things i went through in his hands like even when it's a long story i i i i prefer just to talk about the the, the journey lines than bringing him in because it's going to bring out bad memories out that is so hot and like maybe i will do that some i don't know i don't know i don't know what to say i'm just speechless now i i i get it i get it because you even though you knew his intention and everything you also considered okay maybe this person is from my country so i don't know maybe he's going to try his best to be able to help me out and yeah. at that point did you have the chance to say okay i'm going to report him to the police or anything because he was beating you up and all these things going through do you take mm-hmm. the opportunity to say okay i'm going to call the police maybe they can save me or anything in this morocco is africa like the what the, what is police is it, you don't um it's not like nigeria where you can maybe nigeria and if i'm in nigeria i can go and call the police that the police is uh, my baby daddy is hitting me and they was okay maybe arrest me for today or stuff like that in morocco you as a woman won't even have the courage to go to the police because you know when you get to the, the police will now deport you back to uh magnaya where you now trek back to morocco So you don't want to go through that stress you just have to gear everything that comes in report to <laughs> no it doesn't work that way so he knew that so that he took that yeah. as an advantage and at a point so at a point that he realized that everything for like six months eight months and you're still having the baby even though yes he has to beat you to go to the hospital and everything at a point of you giving birth how was the process at your nine months how was the process it was uh good it was horrible so horrible because okay um at my 6 months when i was when the pregnancy was 6 months old i went for striking you know like i went to the sea to get into uh, to spain but the, the the police arrested us on on top of the sea so they had to deport us back to magnaia algeria border um between morocco and algeria in the the middle of the uh, like, like the no man's land the border so we have to now wait there and trek back into the country again so the process of the pre- when when now that like oh god i'm sorry no you can okay yes i mean just take your time because not all memories that are easy to share we share them again so yeah that is how we have emotions you get to a point that you're sharing stories you can cry you get to a point that you're sharing good memories you can laugh so it's part of it's part of us 
Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, what? Um. I. I had issues by carrying the child. The police hit me with their car. The I had to trek. Uh, I fell down with my tummy on the floor, you know, and um, I, I felt sick when uh, at eight months, twelve days, I felt I felt sick, and they they took me to the hospital, and they didn't attend to me because I had no papers. There was one lady, one Spanish lady who was living in she was living in Morocco, uh, in Morocco then, so okay. Uh, I don't have water here. No, no problem. You need you need to get some water. Yeah, please. Okay, no problem. One minute. No we'll we'll wait for you. Okay. We'll you. Just yeah, just just go get some water. All right. Be back. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah we're waiting for you. So guys, I mean, I I hope you are all you are all looking at what is going on, and I mean, her sharing her story and the things that she has been through. I know a lot of people like I have friends back home that always support you and tell you, bro, we want you to help us to come to America and stuff like that. It is not easy. Not everybody that get the chance to be able to just, uh, I mean, put things together to be able to come here, whether in Europe, whether here in America. It's very hard. I know a lot of people go through, even go all the way to Mexico to be able to get to the United States. So, for a lady. By by her standard and at her age to go through this, I mean, everybody out here just listen to this, motivate yourself. Not saying that you also have to go through the same line, but in life, we are talking about her determination, her her, her focus, and how she was able to succeed. So we are here to just share this to motivate each and everyone watching us today. All right, folks. If you are back, uh, we are waiting for you to just continue. I mean, at the, at this point, at this point that yeah. you were in the hospital, at what point did you give birth? I didn't even know where they took the baby out from. <laughs> I didn't know where they took it out because I was really, really sick. I fainted, so um, uh, they didn't attend to me until hours. I didn't know this time around. I didn't know where I was. As in, I was, I was not myself. I was unconscious. So before they looked for somebody to give down, they put down his paper, her papers. That the lady I told you about now, a Spanish lady living in Morocco. She's also a, uh, she's also working to see that immigrants don't go through a lot of stress. You know so. She put down her paper, and they actually, they said, no, the doctor said, I'm 50-50. Like, I'm, a part of me is dead, and a part of me is still living. But the baby inside me is still breathing. So they have to take out the baby. And they did me a CS, an operation. They, they took the baby out, and I was in coma for six days. I, I woke up the seventh day. And when I woke up, uh, the doctor came to tell me I had a baby girl. That also made me sad. And I, I don't know, I, I fainted again. And I stayed again for extra two days. I woke up the third day. Then I was discharged. That's how I got my child. That's how she came out. Why, 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 were, you, why were you sad after they told you you had a baby? A baby okay. girl, I mean. Okay, that one is is funny though. I, I that one is funny to me because uh, why why I was pregnant, I wanted a male child, like a boy. I wanted to have a boy because after all those things I went through on the way, I now felt maybe if my father had a son as a, a first child, a boy, maybe I wouldn't have gone through those stress. So I said to myself. I want a son so that my girls won't have to won't go through the same stress I went through. So I was actually praying for a boy. The day I went to um to do echography, the doctor asked me what I wanted. I, I told the doctor that I needed a boy. And the doctor said, Okay, 
he carried out the test. He told me that my placenta was in a bad state. He told me that I have, my temperature is very high, that yes, I was going to have a son. And I said, okay. And that was the reason why when they told me now in the hospital that I had a girl, I I lost it. So they, I think they did that in the first place because you said, I mean, you were not in a good mood. You were not, I mean, being treated well. So when you went and decided to just do, I mean, the test to see what kind of baby you're going to have. I mean, yeah. some doctors will want you to be at peace yeah, that was put you in a situation whereby you're not going to be thinking about yeah. it because Do if you know? you're looking for a boy and they tell you it's a girl, it's going to put you in another situation, even for you to think at the yeah. point that you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Do you know, after, I think that was the reason. After the after a uh, one week or two weeks, I went for checkup because I do go to checkup every every two two days to get cleaned up where the cuts did the operation. So I, I met the doctor and the doctor said, Oh, how is your baby girl? I said, mm, no, don't talk to me. <laughs> you told me the boy. And he said yes because I was so young. I was 17. I was so young and he he saw me that I was I was in a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. That if he tells me that uh, what I wanted was not what I have in me, I will yeah. be I will be down. I will not be eating well. I will not be, you know, I will not be taking care of myself. Or maybe some other thing, like you said, will happen. So that was why he he told me. He actually lied to me. And you know, we immigrants, we don't know how to read Arab. Yeah. The the papers is a a, a girl, but he told me to my face that he's a boy because, because you know read. I can't read it. <laughs> so. Who can read Arab? <laughs> Nobody. So that that that's it. At the point that you went into coma and you came back and realized that they've done a CS for you, nobody was there to vouch for you. It was 50-50. You didn't know what was going to happen. No parent, because in situations like this, you need a father of, of the child to be there or a parent. Mm. And just by yourself, where was this guy? I don't want to bring him in, but this baffles my mind to the point. Where was this guy? He was there. He was actually there, but he ran at the when he heard that I was in coma. He came back when they told him I am up. I woke up because he was scared that um, he was scared that um, oh he got a, he got uh, an underage pregnant. And now the underage is dead, so they are going to imprison him. So he had to run. And this Spanish woman was with me throughout, throughout the time they they needed some drugs, just two tablets for for two thousand drachms in in Morocco currency. The money, I, where will I get that kind of money from? So it was that woman that got those two drugs for me, and I took those drugs for. The, it was it was like food to me, like something that I put inside my drip that, that alimentates me. Aliment okay. That as in she was just there throughout that moment until I woke up. That was when my baby daddy came out came, and he didn't he didn't tell me. It was the lady that told me that you have to be careful. Because he 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 left, he came back when he heard that you're up. Mm. So now he took you home with yeah. you with the baby, and what was the plans? Because from letter, the little research I did, and also some of the talks and the things I already know, just giving birth after one year with a cesarean section, and you still went ahead to go to Spain. That process. That was crazy. Did he agree, now you can go or I'll keep the baby, so go ahead. Because one year baby, when you're going to go, how did you also start the process of now finally leaving Morocco to Spain? Um, uh, everything I did then, if they tell me to do those things again, I won't. 
Mm. So I took a lot of drastic. Uh, what was the word? I mean measures. Drastic yeah, measures. yeah. I did things that I didn't even know what I was doing until I finished doing those things. I I immediately I gave birth. Seven days I went for striking. I went to the seaside. I I carried my baby. I can't back her because she was still very very small. I had to put wear her a lot of clothes, lots of clothes. Wrap her very well. Carried her like this. Entered the boat with a seven years old child. So, I mean, sorry, seven seven, months. Months, seven days. No, seven, seven days. days. Yes. Wow. So we entered and the why did, he, why did he stop you? Those guys, like the striking agent, how do you, I mean, how, why did he stop you? All they you? want is their money. Oh, if you oh, have yeah. your money, That's you can do whatever you, you want to do. And how, did, how, did, how did you get the money to pay them? Because we've been, we've been working and saving. We, are, we were actually, uh, 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 you know, he's, he told me when, if I get pregnant, Mm -hmm. We we'll cross together, okay, and we we'll have our baby having a citizen here in Spain. Okay, but the whole plans changed because after, immediately after you got pregnant. Yeah, uh, we went for striking more than once, more than five times, but we couldn't make it through the border. The, we couldn't cross. Anytime we go to the seaside, there's always police to catch us back and send us back. So we tried, tried, and tried, and tried. Before I now put to bed, before I had my child. Then after I had having my child, we started again going to the seaside so that we can, you know, cross in. Then um, at that point when my, my baby was uh, seven days, they said a preparation, they were preparing to cross people and we have already paid money. If we didn't go and those people enter, enter Spain, we are going to lose our money. So we had no option than to go for it. I had no option. I, I mean, I want to go. Like, I had to, you know, carry my, my seven days baby, wrap her very well so that she, she wouldn't get a few cold, and wrap her with other um, plastic bag so she would not get wet and all that. Then when we got inside, the, the Zodiac burst. So had to come back. This time around, the police did not catch us. It was just that the, the, the boat um, uh, opened and the water started entering inside. Then we fell down, fell out from the water and uh, started to... Seven-day baby? Yeah. Seven days, baby. Seven days, uh, not seven uh, months. At, at a point, did you regret it to say, okay, now this guy got me pregnant. Change his plans. He's not helping me. So... Even I've been through a lot to keep this baby. And now, this baby actually is slowing me down. It's, it's just keeping me standstill. So let me just get rid of the baby. Seven days, I don't care. Because I, I realized there was also a stress on you carrying the baby. Maybe the way you want to move by yourself, this baby is also like stressing you up. And just at the point, you regretted and decided to just get rid of the baby to move forward to be able to go ahead? No. I never, I never, I never thought about that. I never. I I can't, I can't remember if I did, but I, I think I didn't. She was just, she was, she was like me and I'm her. Yeah. There was never a time I said, oh, this baby is doing it. It's now in, in Europe that I'll say, oh, because of my baby, I can't work. Oh, because of my baby, I can't get this job. Oh, I wish I can just send her to Nigeria so I can work. But <laughs> that this is now. Then yeah. it was me and I'm her. It was, I, as in, anywhere I go, she's there. She's always with me. Always. Now, I never... So after, that seven started, days, after that seven days that the bull got busted and you came back, how long it took you to just prepare yourself to now finally decide to go again? Did you try many times till finally you were able to go? Yeah, so this, the, the, when she was uh, uh, seven days old, I tried. Mm -hmm. Then I think another two weeks. 
after the seven days, after two weeks, I tried again. No way. Then there, I said, no, I'm not going again. I want to, then with the whole money, the whole money I had then I finished. I didn't have, yeah. So I didn't have uh, more money to continue with the journey. So I had to go back to my base, which is Rabat, the capital city of uh, Morocco. So I went back to Rabat and started looking for money again, working to get money again, begging. Then that was when uh, uh, she started growing, you know, normal life, like normal daily life, go, yeah. go out to work, come back, eat, bath and sleep the next, the next day like that until she was one year, no, uh, 11, um, let me say two months to her birthday. Okay. We, went, we went for striking, but we didn't enter. We came back again, still looking for money to complete the one we spent. Right now you're into Urban Mix. Make sure you stay in tune with the best.